Hello amazing viewers, subscribers and slightly less amazing non-subscribers. This is Lorenzo and you're watching KSP to Mars. Today we have episode 16 already and we're slowly with baby steps making progress towards interstellar dominance and Mars exploration. In last episode I made a horrendous mistake. I launched a lot of rockets, I did the science to get the 90 points to unlock this larger rockets part, this, this tech node. I looked at this image and I thought, yes, that's a big engine. But if we actually read the text, it is actually a very small engine, thrust-wise. So I went ahead and designed a bigger rocket and, well, it turned out to not be very good because it has the, had this small engine. So now we are at the point that we can still not make any bigger rockets, at least I could probably design a better, bigger rocket, but with the same parts. So what I want to do now is research this node, get fuel lines unlocked through that, the asparagus staging we all know and love, and that way I hope to enable rockets that will take me to uh, high orbit, high space. In this episode we are going to attempt a few things. I have my big boosters, one for science payload and one for, well, Kerbal payload, and the science payload has to land somewhere and then the uh, experiments can be recovered for some science. If we look here at the science archives, we have, if we go to the biomes for Kerbin, we have pretty much done everything we can on the water, the grasslands is pretty well covered, the highlands, there's some room for uh, crew reports, so we can land a man on the high highlands, and same with no, the shores are pretty well done as well, the mountains are pretty well done, the deserts are pretty much completely open, so we should land science payload there and Kerbals, same for the ice caps, and there is also, I think, Tundra and Badlands, but I've never found them before, so I don't really know where to look for that. Of course, we also have Space High, which... Um, yeah, Space High, Flying High, Flying Low, in space low. I got confused by the by the by the setup, but we have in space high where we have not ever been yet. I don't know what the cutoff for high space is here. But we can send Kerbals there and of course science experiments. And now that we know how to at least somewhat safely re-enter payload, that is actually possible. Today I'm going to try and send a crew uh, and a science package to as to the poles as well as to the deserts and then see if I can make it to high space with one of the guys. Or I might strip down a probe core and do it with that. No, I'm gonna go with a manned launch. First though, we load up the big bad booster. This is the rocket that puts our first Kerbal in orbit. And we're going to go with Herbury today. The Kerbals don't have a stellar survival rate in this space program so far, but then again, Herbury is very courageous, so he is happy to go. Now, so if you've been watching the previous episodes, you've seen this launch a million billion times, so I will not show it to you again. I will, you will, I will treat you to a nice view of it majestically leaving the pad, and then I'm going to uh, cut forward to the result of that launch. So here we are, the very familiar rocket. This design is serving me quite well, at least for orbital purposes. It currently has about 12.5 kilometers per second of delta V. That means it can get into a polar orbit to reach the ice caps, as well as, of course, an equatorial orbit to reach the deserts. Most difficult part of today's mission will be to time our re-entry uh, in such a way that we actually land where we want to be. First up is the pole. So I'm going to do that, and I will see you when the conclusion is near. So... You might have been expecting to see the poles, but the rocket listed to the east when I took off, so I went for the desert instead. Now, when I was over the desert, look, there's the last stage in the distance burning up. When I was over the desert in orbit, I just basically braked and started falling down. So we have quite a steep re-entry corridor here. So far, it is looking well. We have 6 kilometers per second of speed to scrub still. The heat shield is performing good, and, uh, well, this will be the steepest re-entry so far. So we will see if Herbury Kerman is going to survive that, and we will know that momentarily, because the G-forces are climbing, we're at 6 Gs, and that should spike to well over 10 in just a bit. In the meantime, the heat shield, of course, its sole job is to keep everything at a manageable temperature, below 1500 degrees, if at all possible and hopefully the G's will not reach, reach such heights as to kill Herbury. 
going to ask him for a crew report now to see if that counts as over the desert yet. Now it's still upper atmosphere. And we kind of need him to survive because we need him to do the science that will tell us all about these deserts, or indeed, I think they're deserts. If they're mountains, then he will tell us about the mountains. We're at 8 Gs now, we're 3 kilometers per second still having to scrub that. That was a good sentence. And we are at 30 kilometers altitude. I think we're in good shape. We have two and a half kilometers per second to still to slow down by. And we're at 500 degrees cooling and we have 100 ablation points left, even though they are depleting rapidly. No matter though, we're only going at 1600 meters per second now. So even if the ablation stops, I think we should be fine. And we will see that momentarily because it is in fact going to run out. So let's see what happens when this stops. I'm expecting a spike in heat. A quick 200 degree increase, but then the vessel has been slowed down and now we are just coming in gently for a routine. We're still supersonic, Mach 2 or 3, but that is still being slowed down, of course. And we have the parachute for the last bit. Again, going to ask for a crew report. This still counts as upper atmosphere. Oh dear. My computer is having a hard time with this, I don't know why, but it seems to be passing. And we're 17 kilometers now. Let's give me a crew report. Yes, a crew report of flying over Kerbin's desert. Going to radio that home because it's possible to do that for 100%. There goes the antenna. And that gives us some science points. More importantly, I now have somewhat of an idea how to pinpoint these landings. So the next trip to the poles should go relatively well. 10 kilometers now and subsonic, so I'm going to deploy the parachute and let it waft us down to the surface. See you there. And there we are, almost landed. Look at that desert surface. So now it's all up to Herbury. First, of course, the crew report again from the actual desert. Let's transmit that home because we can. And just to be sure, let's wait before getting out. So that has been transmitted. Getting the EVA report from here. Keep that. And transfer that home. Just in case anything goes wrong with the recovery vehicle, we can transfer that. And of course we have to make the batteries happen happy so they have a purpose and a sense of accomplishment on the mission as well. Although that's not the most important thing here. So take a surface sample, nine science from the desert sample and the EVA report. Let's keep that as well. So Now time to return to the capsule and recover the whole shebang. So let's see how much we get from this. In total we went from 22 to 46. So if we do this at the poles as well and get the science package with the other rockets, then we should be good to unlock fuel lines. So let's launch another one of these bad boys, shall we? Big bad booster and Herbert did a good job. He can get he gets to go again. So I'm going to launch this rocket as soon as it is loaded because that is important. Enjoy the black loading screen. It sure takes a long time. But there we are. A wonderful daytime launch. So activating the stability this time around so that we launch straight up for a northbound trajectory. As before, I will see you hopefully at the pole, north or south, haven't decided yet, for more science. And there we are, once again re-entering at a high G factor, at a high temperature factor. And as much as as much as for my bragging about being able to pinpoint re-entries, it has failed. We are falling short of the ice caps. So unfortunate that. I hope Herbury gets to live though, so he can try another day. We will see that momentarily because the heat shield is about gone. But we are also through the worst of it. So I'm going to launch again and see. Yes, this is pretty much a guaranteed survival at this point. 
who would have thought that our space program gotten into the realm of guaranteed survivals? Anyway, I'm going to launch again and see if we can do better. So, see you then. Here we are, back on the launch pad, back with Herbury. If you've got a keen eye, you will recognize that the rocket is now taller. I have added fuel tanks to almost every stage. The last stage has a quarter tank extra. The second to last stage, the penultimate stage, has a whole tank extra. The first stage has a half tank per column extra and the second stage has one full tank extra. This beast now has 13.05 kilometers per second of Delta V, the most of any rocket built thus far in this space program. And I'm not sure I can reliably squeeze out more with just these engines. I want bigger engines for a bigger first stage so that so if you take this rocket, I want to build something big underneath it that could then lift everything and add maybe a few kilometers per second of delta V. So I'm hoping that with this rocket, I will be able to conveniently and easily, without perfect flying, because the last design kind of hinged on flawless piloting to get to orbit, I want an easy, easy to fly, accessible orbital lifter to reach all the biomes in this planet to get the science, to get the fuel lines, to get more efficient rockets, to get everywhere. So far it's been a bother and I hope that does not continue. Anyway, I'm going to try and fly this thing. It looks so far to take off just fine, even though it's, of course it's more sluggish since I've added fuel and didn't add engines. So the thrust to weight ratio is a lot lower, but then again we carry more fuel, so in the end it shouldn't matter much. So I will see you hopefully this time when we are coming in for a descent over one of the poles. See you then. So, we did not land on the poles, but instead we have a lesson in rocket design. As you can see here, this is not an orbital trajectory. The rocket, even though it has a lot more delta V, 13.13 kilometers per second. I even did a little improvement from 13.05 to 13.13 behind the scenes. We are in fact uh, left with less orbital momentum, orbital energy, because the thrust to weight ratio has suffered too much and we have wasted too much energy in the lower reaches of the atmosphere. That's a problem. So even though we have more Delta V, we have a less useful rocket. So back to the drawing board, probably back to the old style rocket and try and use that to get into this polar orbit. It is possible, we did it already in the previous episode, so I will be seeing you with that rocket. And here we go again! And here we are once again in a fiery re-entry. The trajectory looks like this, and if we survive, we will definitely end up over a polar ice sheet. So that's the good news. The bad news hasn't materialized yet, but well, if he dies, he dies and we get nothing. So it makes sense to start getting the reports as soon as possible. Although we are still in the high upper atmosphere, from which we already have the reports, of course. It looked like something was exploding. Oh, that was probably the stage that I jettisoned earlier. Well, lucky we didn't get hit by that. I am worried we are already at 10 Gs at, and we still have 6 kilometers per second to ditch. That means we're doing it fast, but that also means that Herbury is getting rather crushed. Now, is the heat shield doing? That is doing fine. So what we have learned so far is that the heat shield mechanics, they stand up fine to high Gs. But the crew is another matter entirely. Please don't die, Herbury. Reaching crew G limit, it says. But the Gs are uh, are falling. They are descending, receding, softening, uh, getting less horrendous. So that's good. The heat shield is half ablated now. <gasps> no. Crew member Herbury Kerbin died of G damage while it was on the way back. Damn it. That is terrible. That means that this perfectly good capsule is now space junk. Herbury is dead. He can't 
press the lever for the parachute to make that deploy. So, well, we can watch it crash and burn, I suppose. So let's do that. Damn it, that was just over the edge. The G's were already coming back down, but then he died. Oh yeah, I'm trying to control it, but that's of course not possible, because the pilot is dead. da da dim da da doom the first landing on the polar ice caps, but with no one alive to sample anything of it. So that's too bad. Too damn bad. Well, that's another one for the casualty list. It's getting quite long by now. And evidently, the re-entries aren't quite mastered yet. Ironically, we need a stronger rocket for this that can push the trajectory higher so that the re-entry corridor is flatter. Oh well. Mistakes happen. What I'm going to do now is switch to probes. I've killed enough ker kerbals for now. I'm feeling remorseful. So I'm going to make a rocket to put a science probe in the desert again. Slightly easier target. And I will see you on the launch pad for that. And once more back into the launch pad with an unmanned science booster. I'm going to give this rocket, this configuration, one more shot and if it still underperforms I'm going to go back to the drawing board and design a new one because I'm getting quite sick of well, failing all the time. I might just add a stage or I might do something else. I don't know yet, but this is probably the last time you're going to see this one. Unless, of course, it performs beautifully. Which we will see in a bit. So, see you in that bit. And, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this episode started out so well with some good science points, but now we're just missing our targets. Just overshot the continent-sized desert, this whole bit, and we will now touch down off the coasts of these desert nations. So, I've been working a few episodes now on getting science from biomes. There's still a lot of points to be had there. Oh, well, that's the Kerbal Engineering System that's stuck on the outside of this probe. Uh, what I'm saying is... Uh, what was I saying? I spent a few episodes on the exploration of these different biomes on Kerbin. I've got a fair few science points from that, but I'm well sick of it now. So I'm going to the back to the drawing board, making a new rocket. The goal is to build something that can carry a pod, a materials bay, and the goo canister um, with a delta V of 15 kilometers per second and a decent thrust to weight ratio. What I want to do is explore the uh, high space of Kerbin with all the three experiments, land them safely and um, if possible make a moon flyby. But I have no idea how much delta V we need for that. Uh, so the possibility or indeed feasibility of that remains to be seen, but this will be the last episode that focuses on Kerbin biome exploration, because I'm sick of it and I think you are too. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I touched the controls and then the probe burned up. Very realistic, but fortunately not a big deal at all, because this was not going to be able to do any useful science, so... Rather dud of an episode, I would have wanted to get more science points and unlock uh, all those good things like fuel lines, basically just fuel lines, to then make the development of a new rocket a little bit easier. We did not get it, so I'm going to work hard at making a, a nice and decent rocket. You will see that the next episode. Uh, for now, this was Lorenzo. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.